the way we think about you know where colors long-term goals are and how they fit with genomics in general is that we think of ourselves as a preventative health company uh, and our goal is to do this at a population scale um, and we use genomics as a key building block to enable that um, and so we use genomics as a way for people to understand the major risks that they have so that they can best decide how to invest their healthcare effort. So for someone who has elevated risk of cancer, that's a very different thought process than someone who might have very high risk of cholesterol. Um, and so really the way we view ourselves at Color is really being a service that helps work with people over a long period of time to have the deepest insights into their health, but also being able to have the tools in order to follow up on those insights. So when you think about something like cancer, um, getting tested is one part of it um, in terms of knowing if you have elevated risk, but it really fits into a much broader picture, which is incorporating your personal family history um, and your with your genetics and your lifestyle to understand your full risk picture, but then using that as a way to really follow up with people to ensure that they're actually getting screened at the right times, um, ensuring that they're following up on the lifestyle changes, et cetera, that actually will be the things that have the downstream effects on their long-term health. We have essentially two core principles about how we think about data. Um, the first one is that the data belongs to the individual, so we put the person in charge of deciding who gets access to the information. Um, so they have full control over that in terms of uh, sharing with their doctor, sharing with their family, whether they want to contribute it to research, et cetera. The second principle that we have is that we believe that it's important for companies in the industry to contribute anonymized data to research. Um, and what we do is we give people the option to opt in to allow their data to be used in an anonymous, uh, anonymous way for scientific discovery. Um, and in general, we, get, we tend to get about an 80% opt-in rate, so a lot of people really want to help science. Uh, but we really want to make sure that that's a proactive choice that people are making. It's really hard to tell kind of how the overall genomic space is going to evolve. I think of it as similar to computing where it's a new technology, core technology that enables many different applications. Um, I think there's a, uh, a, a big application around understanding people's risks um, and optimizing the key health decisions they make over their lifetime. I think that's one big application. Um, I think there are also other applications that are going to be very important around um, early diagnosis of disease, so for example, detecting cancers early, um, as well as in the course of treatment of diseases. So for example, um, uh, what, if someone is in cancer treatment, um, being able to better select the actual therapy that's most appropriate for that person and their disease.